camera for the kids, how would you line up? Well, I pretty much had it theme up. So that was my, with a little bit of a, a gap between. When I first started, I actually had my fingers together and you have a little bit less control and I feel like you can bowl maybe a little bit quicker because you, I felt like my fingers were more relaxed. Um, but then I went to that to just really try and come behind the ball and get that seam. I never had a great, great seam. There was times when it came out really well um, and it felt really good. If I wanted to try and swing it, I'd fa face it towards sort of first slip. Yep. Um, and that was generally more over here. And even that, you didn't even have to do that so much. It was more about getting your wrist in the right position. So because I would have my wrist a little bit there, often I'd go that way, so to a right-hander. But I always wanted to swing one or two balls back in if I Just could early, them. because then that means they have to play that one that goes across, which was my danger ball. When we watched Joffre Archer, there's a lot of that. A lot of that, yeah. Were Ryan you trying Harris. to do that? Ryan Harris, were you trying to do that? Always or was trying it to do that. mainly coming from the power coming from your shoulder? No, no, always trying to get that, that nice wrist um, get behind the ball because you want to have the ball rolling out like that. That's how you get the behind the ball, late swing, finishing yeah. off past your... Well, if you're a right-hander, it's past your um, left knee. Yeah. That was what Dennis used to teach, uh, teach me or tell me. And then for me, it was back here. So that's to get late swing because that means you're behind the ball longer and you're out there as long as possible and you're getting there. And it was just... Yeah, that's how I tried to get my late swing when it, when it happened. How much of your pace came from your run-up? Could you bowl just as fast from a 22-metre run-up, which was your standard, yeah. and from, say, here? Yeah, pretty, pretty close, too. I mean, it wouldn't, it's not good for my back or my body to come off a short run and do that because over time you'll, there's every chance of breaking down. But then you look at like guys like Boomer and Joffre's got a really slow run-up. Mm -hmm. um, it's just about finding what works for you. So I had to find... I changed my run-up. I actually had a short run. It was about 19 metres when I first started. And you're right. supposed to shorten it when you, when you get older. <laughs> when I came back from my toe injury, I actually lengthened it to about 22.8 or something, I think it was, or 2.9. Um, but that was more for, I wanted to run in off my mark a bit quicker, get my momentum going, and then get that sort of rhythm. Um, and then once I got to the crease, it would almost be a, a slight increase, but then I'd want to be braced and balanced at the crease so I could then get over my front leg. If I was too quick or too slow, there was always chances of overstriding and then I'd have to go Swing away. It. So that's why sometimes, well, in 09, I was all over the place. There was, uh, my mind wasn't quite in the game, but it was because I was overstriding, sitting on my back leg first, then I had to overstride, pull out here, and got no chance of being consistent if the ball's being released at different heights. So, I mean, all those things uh, made a big difference throughout my career. And I mean, like I said, there was a lot of changes in my action. Come, come back here. Because I want you to bowl somehow. Okay. Sanger, are you ready? Put your helmet on. <laughs> You I'll talk about alignment be... with your hips and all that sort yeah. of stuff. Did you find it easier to bowl at a left-hander? Yeah. Why? Well, it's like a right-hander to a right-hander. You've, you've got that alignment to the off-stump, whereas a left-hander to a left-hander, you've got the alignment. I could easily swing the ball. I feel like I can get a lot taller. Um, it just it feels much better. When you go to a right-hander, you have to just come around your body a little bit more because you've got to get that shoulder pointed towards sort of off-stump. So that alignment then changes. Then you've got to come just slightly around. Whereas a left-hander, it's, it's there and you're over. You locked horns with him a few times. Yeah. He had some good stuff he against you. He smashed me every Hang day. on just a sec, though, because uh, I just want to... Before you face one, I'm just going to show this. Watch out there, Nass. I mean, you scored a load of runs against Mitchell and Australia. What are your memories? And you hadn't seen this until about an hour ago when you got hit. What are your memories of that? Well, it's an annoying angle of his slingy action coming straight at you. So I tried to ride the bounce and work it to leg side. And the ball Let's managed see. to hit me right there where Let's the least see. padding is. And as a result, I've had some metal work done there. There's a, a, three screws, a pin and a plate, and the finger's never been straight since then. So hopefully not a repeat of that this time, but what, battle scars for sure. What are the challenges that are facing a left armour who's that quick? Well, it's, it's, it's just everything about it. If he gets his swing and his length right at that pace, it becomes really difficult because you, you not only concentrate on this because his short ball was such a threat and it was a weapon that he used often to mix it up, you had to really go back and forth between these lengths. So with this slingy action, the trajectory was always at you. It was not easy to get under or sway out of the way. So I used to, when I played him in Australia, my theory was to make sure I deal with the short ball really well and get into ball as full as possible because it really tightens up the area I need to concentrate on. And hopefully it won't swing for too long. If you go back in your crease, then you're going to face one. You used to sit a bit deeper in your crease to Mitchell than even Brett Lee, who was just as quick. You could argue sometimes even quicker. Why did you do that? Um, I just felt that I needed a little bit more time with Mitch. Um, both Brett and Mitch were extremely quick, but because of his action, 
and the trajectory and the fact that he used the short ball a lot right throughout from even from his first spell, it just gave me that much more time to deal with it by batting a foot inside my crease. Right, go, go down there. What are you, you going to bowl then? What are you going to bowl him? What are you looking what at? Are you as you run up to what I'm going to bowl him. I never knew when I was playing. <laughs> <laughs> I was just guessing. Somewhere around you the swung it earlier in practice. Well, see, off the short run as well. What I used to do before I'd bowl in a, in a game was I'd actually do walkthroughs to get mentally prepared. So it'd be about doing my cues. So it was getting my action right. So then, when I was out in the middle, I didn't have to worry about it. Right. So I'd oft often warm up on a short run, and I was a lot taller in my action because I wasn't running in and sometimes overstriding. overstriding so right, yeah. everything was like really tight, and I could swing the ball off a short run. So. Um, Hopefully I can get it up there nice for I, I did practice one earlier and he covered uh, drove me. He and trust me, my initial, re my initial reaction was, oh, <laughs> next ball. <laughs> trust me, I hope you do too. So, uh, <laughs> right, let's have a couple. No pressure. No right, pressure. Yeah. Johnson or Sangakara. All right, good luck to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. What field you got? field you got? What field you got? Uh, if this was out here at Lords right now, I would have, I'd probably have like a, where NASA was, uh, not that close, <laughs> but uh, a guy around the corner, I'd have um, someone <laughs> under the helmet, a couple of slips, gully, I'd try and, I'd invite him to try and hit through the covers, even though he's a good cover driver, but because the ball's swinging, yeah. so that sort of brings me into the game a bit more. Where are your scoring areas? Oh, I would like to write it singles here, singles here. Yeah. Anything short and wide, I'm going to throw my bat at it if I can, because any sort of contact, it's going to go over the field. Um, anything short, ball to the field, I'll try and avoid. But I'm waiting to play the ball so I don't get caught negative. Go on, then. I'm going to bring Nass in about the right-hander. Oh, he's playing it easy. Nicely done. Challenges Jeez. to facing that sort Ooh. of pace with a left-arm angle, what would you say they are for a right-handed batsman? I'd say being 51 years old, You're looking forward to not batted time, for 30 years, not particularly good when I was, and I've just heard he's had metal plates put in his fingers, <laughs> and I had poppered on fingers when I played. Well, he said it so didn't that's the challenge. That's the challenge. Okay. Apart from that, left armour, you know, we are brought up in England with left armours that swing it back in, pretty gentle pace, get your pad out of the way, be careful of the one that goes across. He is probably the most modern, closest equivalent to someone like Wazim Akram. So someone who can swing it, someone who's got a bumper who can hit you very hard, someone who can hit you on the foot, someone who's got a slow ball. So there's so many things you've got to put in the equation. I can tell you, sitting in the commentary box 2013-14, mm. he was scaring us through our monitors. That, I think Peterson called it the gabatoire. When he ran out and bowled, remember all the songs before, he bowls to the left, he bowls to the right, all those songs suddenly went out the window and I think everyone realised he was the real deal. Hang on, you used to, you used to hum a tune, didn't you? Sorry? Did you used to hum a tune? Yeah, Frozen. Why? How on earth Let did you come up with Frozen? Well, my daughter loved it oh, at okay, the time, cool. so, and it blocked out all the bad... Because I used to sing that song, Balls to the Left, Balls to the Right. I started believing it. So, well, I it did happen. I just want to talk to you about um, when you bowl a short ball, where you want to get it to. Come over here, because there was... Oh. You gave Matt Pryor a good go. I'm not over. bowling a short ball, yeah. Where, where is he? Pryor, 2013, 14. Let me just run this through. So you got him under his armpit. Is that yeah. ideal? There's two short balls I like to bowl. Was armpit ball, which is that. Um, the first two, and then... Um, Pushing back and then across him. Yeah, so that was an obvious, obvious plan to him. Um, but, yeah, it's either... Especially with a left-hander on strike, with, it, was, it was that ball in there. It's almost like there's a blind spot, I feel like, to the right hand, left hand, under yeah. the armpit. It's really hard to move. You can, if you're not... Um, it's a bit like what you're saying. It's really hard to move. Sometimes if the angle's coming in and it's here, yeah, it's but you sort of don't know whether to go that way, that way, or go under. a left-hander the worst... Part of what well, position I want to be in is a balls at my front shoulder coming back into me, and you've got a natural little blind spot there, yeah. and you've got to ride it or play it or get out of the way. So if it's there more often than not, it gets me into a lot of trouble. It's like Graham, Graham Smith was the same. I, I got him twice in that sort of area. He broke his hand as well. Didn't yeah, I mean, it's, it seems like it's a quite a difficult spot. So it was a ball that I loved bowling because it was quite difficult to face, but it also just sort of um, the mindset of it all as well, then trying to get the ball up there next and get the, the court behind. Pop up there. The ball he liked bowling was the quick 90 mile an hour just under the armpit. Did you mention he broke someone else's hand as yes, well? I couldn't quite hear quite you. A bit. Quite a few. I was actually twice. <laughs> twice. They're running through the list. Oh. When, um, where are you looking to score? Ah, uh, listen, you're, I'm looking to play him off the back foot completely, well, especially in Australia. There's no mileage. As we saw the other day, bowlers are very smart. You know, we saw the other day, who was it, Denley, just getting on their front foot to Hazelwood, and Hazelwood picks that up very quickly. You're trying to get on the front foot, 
to Mitchell Johnson at the Gabba, to, at the Gabba or anywhere, he's suddenly going to get it here. I would be like Kumar thinking I'm going to play him late but knowing that he's going to eventually get you forward as well. Are you standing deeper in your crease? Very deep, probably behind the stumps. Behind stump. the stumps, <laughs> I love Phil Tufnell. Right, what, um, what's your field? Uh, I would have three slips, gully, point... You've got to have a third man, so you've got to Should I have four slips then? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll just go with the three. Uh, three slips, gully. Leave cover open again, because if I do swing one, that brings that one into play if I go across as well. Uh, to try and get him to play there. Uh, leg side, I'd probably have one mid-wicket just because of the swing. If it wasn't swinging, maybe no, no guy there, and I'd even think about going around at some point. You mentioned your alignment to the left-hander. What are you thinking about here, making a bigger shoulder? Uh, it's, it's, I don't want to get too far across, but it's, it's, it's aligning yourself. It's, it's, the run-up's actually a big part which we haven't spoken about. Well. So the run-up angles. So you can, we talk about angles, and you can run up from anywhere that you want and have, have a big angle, but it's where you land at the crease. So if I have a wide angle to a, a right-hander, where I'm trying to land my front foot should be where his off stump is, or right. around that mark. If I'm running in like this, this is where I should like try and be landing from that position, because everything then will be in line. Okay. But if I run from there and start to creep in, Look what happens. I'm start, my body's starting to go there. So all my energy is going towards third man. So what do I have to do when I get here? I have to come around myself first. So then that's changed everything yeah. straight away. Then I have to go over. Then my arm path is going to be lower. So I'm more chance I'm going to try and fight it here to get it online. Otherwise, I'm going to go that way. Or then if I'm fighting it, I'm going to go that way. So I've got no chance of being consistent. Come on, let's get a couple of quick deliveries in before we end. So now that I've thought of that, I've got to get it right. <laughs> Good luck, Nash. But I will Thank go you. tighter to him at the start. OK. Oh. <laughs> 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 I mean, talking about playing late, that's a bit too late, I reckon. Nash. Thank you. <laughs> did it swing? <laughs> you didn't tell me he swung it. <laughs> you open your eyes, man. We've just been talking about wrist positions and trying to swing it back in and where the field is. Uh, Hold it. Oh go on, have another word. one. Yeah, Let's see if you can... do it again. Use your bat. <laughs> no one told me he swung it. Well, it's, that's our fault then, is it? Right, Mitch, crank one up. Come on, full on. You want to full <laughs> speed? Like, all right. This could end very nastily. <laughs> oh, well, oh played, well played, Nas. Very good. How oh, solid. Go, come back this oh, way. Leave the ball, Mitch. Come back over here. Oh. You enjoy that? Yeah, lovely. What was that all about? I was just smiling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how good that head is, eh? <laughs> you proud of those numbers, though? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know what makes me more proud. I've never been someone that looks at stats. It, it's more about, it was more about wins for me. Um, as see, even that there, like, uh, that looks amazing. 61. But we lost that test match against South Africa in 08. So, um, I look, I'm sure I'll, I'll sit back one day and in the future and be like, yeah, extremely proud. I am proud, but I don't know. It's, um, it's great to see and I'll reflect later on in my, in my life. Come on, Nas, thanks very much. It's been, Mitch. Thank you. Well, it's been a great pleasure to talk thanks, to you. Thanks, Mitch. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.